All right, welcome back everybody to my channel. Hope you're having a wonderful day so far. Today marks a special day as we release and submit our Harvard CS50X final project for 2025. For my final project for Harvard CS50X, I wanted to make a project that was really applicable to myself and a current situation. I currently run a small business with my girlfriend where we manage and sell vintage clothing online. She currently finds it difficult to manage the accounting portion of the business as she is mainly focused on the marketing and branding and expanding the business for general profitability. So I made this program as a way for for her to have ease of use as well as other small business owners that are in a similar situation to be able to log inventory items and expenses, transact those items, have an income statement generated based on the calendar periods and a balance sheet generated under that period as well. Let's go ahead and jump into the project. When you jump into the project and launch, you are met with a Tekinter GUI application completely written in Python. We have the first tab of inventory where you can log individual inventory items and load them into the SQLite database on the back end. Uh, you just give a date, a description, a size, and a cost, and an item will be loaded and displayed into the tree view. Let's go ahead and do that. I have populated the parameters for inserting an item into this database. And once I add it in, you can see it's populated into the tree view matrix. If I go ahead and try to add in that item again, I am met with a status failure for a duplicate item. And the item that was duplicated or being attempted to be duplicated is populated back to the matrix for you to view. Let's go ahead and add in a second item. All right, I'll go ahead and add a second item into the database here. If we go ahead and try to add that duplicate item again, you will see that individual population of the duplicated item being displayed back to you on the failure. You can press the refresh button at any time to bring the matrix back to its original state. In the search item menu frame down at the bottom right, you can select individual headers within the matrix view to actually search for individual data points. For instance, if we like to search and populate our matrix tree for the individual ID item number one, we can search for ID number one, search, and there it is brought to our attention via the matrix. We can refresh and bring our state back to its original place. Moving on to adding expenses, the add expense functionality works very similar to the add item functionality, but just for different data point parameters encompassed of that of an expense. Let's go ahead and populate an expense now. Now that we have populated some data into the add expense frame, you can see that we are adding in a box labels description on this state for this cost. Expenses have categories associated for them for organizing individual expenses within the statistics and then methods for how this expense actually took place. You can also give an optional note parameter to an expense to further describe the expense in detail. If we add this expense to our matrix, you can see that it is in our system and logged into the database. Let's go ahead and add in another expense. All right, went ahead and added in camera film as our secondary expense. And if I go ahead and add this expense, try to duplicate it, you will see camera film is populated solo and brought to our attention as the failure on our duplicate expense. We can search for individual expenses, just similar exactly to how we did to the add item. We can refresh the matrix back to its original state, search for individual uh, parameters, such as a cost of let's say 25, and search for all items or expenses rather within our database here that have a cost with 25. And as you can see, box labels number one was populated in the matrix tree for a cost of 25. Now let's say we also bought camera film for $25 and we add this expense to the matrix tree as well. So we have two camera film expenses here. The search expense will populate multiple expenses per search. So if we search for cost of 25, it brings up both instances of 25 cost. Moving on to the transactions tab, the transactions tab, we are allowed and able to actually transact and convert inventory items from inventory status into sold status. To commit a transaction, you have to commit one of two types, a sale or a return. Let's go ahead and sell item number one. We paste in item number one for the ID here and the total sticker price of the item that we sold it for. Let's say we sold the total item for $25. We sold it via Instagram as the platform we sold it with shipping for a $5 shipping charge, no fees associated with this, and no applicable discounts to the customer. Again, you can apply an optional note parameter to the individual transactions to further detail them. Let's commit this transaction for item number one. If we go back to our inventory, item number one will now have a status of sold. I'll move forward to the income statement to display what is going on in there before we actually return an item. Within the income statement tab, we are auto-populating various details from the calendar periods given within the database. The calendar period 2025 is currently being worked on as that is the current period being displayed. It is summing gross sales from our transactions under 2025 and various other details such as sales transport, total allowances, fees, discounts, computing a net sales based on that information, a cost of goods sold, computing a gross margin, logging expenses for that calendar period, overall computing a positive or negative net income for the business. 
As you can see, we have the gross sales of $25 as we have sold one item for $25. We have sales transport of five because we have total transportation charge of $5, $0 in fees and discounts for a total of $30 in net sales. This item cost us $10 from the inventory page and is being populated here via the cost of goods sold and giving us a $20 of gross margin. We have $62.5 worth of expenses logged within our expenses here pulled from our expenses page, giving us a total net income of negative $42.50. So currently this business is in the negative. Now we do have an allowances tab here, which allows us and will populate the return for the individual items as well. So we can give a or transaction type of return rather, remove the parameters for everything below the actual item amount because those are no longer needed and will unsuccessfully make a commit for return if those are given. You only need to give the transaction type Type return a date the item you want to return and then the amount of the total return within the amount field you can also give an optional note as well but one is auto populated upon a return type for you for further detail let's go ahead and return item number one for a total of let's match the transaction total for this transaction of thirty dollars so everything balances out on our income statement let's commit the transaction and as you can see we made a, a transaction type for line item number two of return for item number one of a total of thirty dollars the transaction total is $30, which will cancel out this above one, as you can see on the income statement. The gross sales is summed with sales transport less the allowances, giving us now right remaining with negative $62.5 of net income because the gross sales cancels out and leaving us with just expenses applied to the business. We then have the ability to track balance sheets or remaining assets left over in inventory for the given calendar periods. We, as you can see, we have or we have two now unsold items in inventory via that return on item number one, giving us a total of cost of assets remaining for the balance sheet for 2025 as $22. And that is being reported here on this line. If we went ahead and committed a sale for item number one again for that $25 amount via Instagram, shipping five dollars zero zero and commit the sale for item number one making it now a sold item once again the balance sheet will now reflect that that item is now gone from the total summation and it is being populated appropriately here via the cost of goods sold for that one item went up by 10 and our allowances, our gross sales now went up to account for that you know increase in sale. And lastly, the settings tab is where the business user will be able to update individual uh, parameters specific to that of their business. So they can apply a, a business name to override the default name within the header. You can give and update, add and remove individual sizings to the sizing list to further categorize your items how you would like them. You can do the same thing for the expense categories, the expense methods, the individual sale platforms within the actual transactions, and as well the individual transportation methods within the transactions frame as well. As you can see, if I go ahead and add a size of test size to the uh, current sizes and update that, there it is put in, and I can add, and you'll see here within the inventory, a size given of test size. I'll go ahead and remove that with the remove parameter and it was successfully removed. All right, guys, this has been the demo video for the small business manager for our CS50X 2025 final project. Thank you guys so much for watching and joining along. It's been quite the journey as we had two iterations of this project within the CLI and now within a full Python to Kinter uh, GUI application, which is really, really awesome. I had a lot of fun making it. It taught me a lot about uh, the file organization and making sure everything works together, debugging, uh, I really, really enjoyed the course overall. Discord and YouTube and Twitch subscribers, I will be uploading a community version of this project to GitHub where my Twitch and YouTube subs as well as my Discord members can interact with and do pull requests to add additional features via the community project. Thank you guys so much for joining me here. See ya.